Safe isolation been carried out and now you're ready to change, in this case, a one gang, one way switch. So we've got our permanent line and our switching line. We can see it's not a neutral. It's identified with a brown sleeving as our switching line. And what's brilliant about these inline switches from Quinetic is they do not need a neutral. So I've got exactly what I need, a permanent line and a switching line. And I'm gonna replace this switch for one that has a receiver in it. The receiver has to be powered. So hence we need a supply to it. It's the other switches that will be working on the Kinetic energy when we introduce them. So we'll open it up, so that's our switch. So we've got our two connections here and here. So we're gonna have our permanent line and our switching line connected. We've just gotta pull the front off in order to screw it down. Disconnect my permanent line conductor, obviously it comes out of there and then my switching line conductor. You'll notice that the box is deeper and I've had to change it for a deeper box. This is a single socket box, hence there's no connection for the CPC. So I've had to use a Wago 221 connector to hold that in place. And again, in, in the real world, that box is like to be a dry line box or a, sh a flushed in metal box into the wall. And now we've got to make our connections. And as you can see it, we've got an L connection for our permanent line and our L1 for our switching line connections. We have to separate the two. So this is got to just be a bit careful just to pull the switch front off the body. So it should just come away with a gentle little wiggle as you go. So I've separated those two and that gives me my two fixing screws when I need them in order to hold it into position. So I've just got to make my connections on the back now and then my switching line, remember that is not a neutral doesn't need a neutral which makes it fantastic lots of times there aren't neutrals at switches so i'm going back when i've got this connected this will be exactly the same as it was before a one-way switch operating that light we'll introduce some more switches so we lay that into position onto the box and then we can screw it down then we can reintroduce that curve it is important you get it on the right way around because obviously you want down to be on for the switch the bit in the back that we've connected to is our receiver. So then we'll be able to pair some more switches to it. But let's see it first of all, once we've got it back together as a one-way switch. That's held into position. Got to bring it in our cover and just reposition that back onto the, to the switch, get it to clip into the right place. And there we go. So, we're, so that's the switching mechanism. Press it down to turn the light on and off. So we'll power it back up and we'll see it as a one-way switch first. So that was super simple. And now we've just got a one-way switch. So that's fine, but we said we want to introduce other switches. We're not going to use cables. We're going to use this kinetic energy that sends a radio frequency that's picked up by here where the receiver sits in order to turn these on and off. So we'll see how to pair some other switches. These switches need to have at least a five watt load. I've got a seven watt lamp on mine, but if you think you've got a fancy light fitting with more than one lamp in it, five watts is fine. So that's the lowest wattage range that it will switch. It will switch up to 600 watts of LED or 900 watts of load. But we're interested in obviously now the pairing process and see how simple that is. So I've introduced another very similar switch. You could stick this or screw this to the wall. My daughter's left this loose on her bedside table in order that she can turn her lights on and move it around, which I think is also a nice touch. So you could use some tape on the back here and stick it to your wall, or you could fix it into position. But we're just gonna have it freestanding at the minute. But at the minute, it doesn't do anything. So it's not operating the light, but this one is. So we've got to bring it into pairing process, which is about a six second hold. So push it and hold it for about six seconds and then it should start to flash. When it starts that flashing process, it will be in pairing mode. There we go, so we're in pairing mode. We take the switch we wanna pair, and we operate that switch. That uses kinetic energy. And you now see I'm turning that light on and off with these two switches. So that's become two-way switched by pairing that switch. So this switch now can be taken away it can be 25 uh, meters indoors. So that's with obstacles like doors and walls and that in a way. I think our bedroom's gonna be under 25 meters in the area size and distance of 80 meters outside. In other words, in free air. So I don't think we can have an outside one, but these are IP rated, so I suppose you could, but I'm looking at this with this receiver being installed inside where there's a one-way switch allowing you to put two-way switching in. Look how simple that was. That's something they don't teach you at college, isn't it? That that's now two-way switched. How does this work? There is no cables. There are no batteries in here. By operating the switch, it creates kinetic movement, which creates energy, which sends a radio frequency through the air, which is picked up by the receiver, and the receiver changes it from either on or off, depending on the position it was last in. So we come back on, off, 
We've now got two-way switching. They do some different designs of these switches. I've got another one here, very similar but different color. So again, there's a switch there, but it's gray. We've got um, this one here, which is quite handy, which is a grid switch. So again, this is a grid switch, and we've often seen, especially on site, things like this yoke here or grid mounting frame, and we can position those in there. So that could be paired to it. And that's quite handy if you had a two gang version of this and had a standard light switch, and then you introduced a quinetic switch for something else in the room. And I've also done that in installations as well. And possibly my favorite, believe it or not, that is also a switch you can pair which looks remarkably like most people's key fobs in order to open the car. Okay, so we can pair those. So I'm gonna make it two-way next uh, and intermediate. So we've got two-way. So I'll introduce the gray one to give us three switches. So let's just confirm we have two-way. So how do we set it into pairing mode? Exactly the same as we did before. We press and hold for approximately six seconds until it starts blinking. And then that blinking process will go. So it starts to flash. And then you come in with your other switch you want to pair. And you now find, if I move these out of the way, we can go on, off, on, off, on, off. It's fantastic. So effectively, we have now got two-way and intermediate switching. Well, we haven't got any cables between them. We're sending that radio frequency picked up by the receiver by using movement of kinetic energy to send that signal. No batteries no cable. So that's now got three switches. Shall we pair the key fob one just to, just to have a look at it? It's exactly the same process. Press and hold for three uh, for six seconds until we get that where it starts to, to flash or blink. It's into pairing mode. We bring in our key fob. So we go key fob, switch, 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 key fob. All of those are paired and we could go on and, and continue the process on. So at college, you're taught one way, two way and intermediate, and it's vitally important. You're also taught the two plate, the three plate, and the wired through the switch method of wiring lighting circuits we've shown on the channel. But out there in industry, there is nothing stopping us using this sort of system here to quickly change in a bedroom. You move your bed around, all of a sudden the switch isn't in the right place. You want a two way switch. All you've got to do is change the switch at the door and introduce one of the other switches and you can have up to five other switches. So in this case, we've got four switches. So it's this switch and five others, which makes six. Okay, that you can have in that area in order to use those. So that's by installing a Quinetic inline receiver, replacing your one-way switch, just a simple changing over the connections, and we add permanent line and switching line. That's your receiver, and pairing these switches in here.